But back to with this government here, they want to take total control. They don't want people like you and me. They don't want people to be prepped and ready. And they know we're out here. They know that there are a real select few of people. Because you got to figure out of what, 329 million people that live in this country, you know, what do you think? Maybe 20? I'll be generous. 25% are saying they're prepped, they're ready, and we're where else. So that leaves you 75% of the population that they can easily control. But it's that 25% that they're worried about. Because you see, if you're a prepper and you've been putting food away and everything else, that means you're a thinker. All right. Now you have to remember, you know, you're going back more than likely. You were probably raised this way. You have been taught by your grandparents, by your parents or whoever it could be Uncle John down the road, whoever it may be, you know, but in a lot of areas, if you grew up in, say, smaller towns in rural areas compared to cities, not that they didn't prep back in the day and, and do the canning and all that. I'm not saying that, but your farmer and your people that lived in rural areas had to depend on whatever it is that they put in the ground and harvested, canned, and put up so that they had food to eat during the winter because more than likely, if it's a snowstorm, a blizzard, or whatever else, they didn't have a four-wheel drive pickup truck to jump in and run into town. It's either you walked or you took a horse and buggy, which you're probably not going to do. So you had to make sure that you could withstand being isolated for long periods of time, but you had to have food to eat in order to sustain yourself while you had to go through those harsh times in the winter. You know, you had to have firewood. You had to have um, a way to cook. Most of the time it was wood stoves. You know, my that's what my grandparents had. I mean, obviously over the years, once they, uh, they got gas and everything else, it was, the stove was converted from a wood burning stove. You know, it was one of those big ones, you know, I mean, thing was huge. But it was converted from a wood burning stove to a gas stove. But the point of it is, these people, they know we're out here. And they know that we know they're up to something. Now, we may not have all the answers. And depending on what, you know, some of the YouTube channels out here, you know, they they got some pretty good ideas. I don't know um, how far I would go as far as believing some of these ideas, because some of them out there are really out there. And, um, but, you know, I take those with a grain of salt. And what I suggest that a lot of people do is you do the same thing. Do your homework. That's what I do when I, if I have time and I listen to a, another YouTube channel or something and they're talking about something and for some reason, it just kind of like, ah, I don't know about that. You know, I mean, that's, that's pretty deep or that's pretty out there. And, you know, I'll start doing some checking on it and seeing what I can find out, you know? Um, but that's how you have to, like, you have to do everything nowadays. It, it's like, you have to be so, um, careful on exactly not what you're saying, but what you're comprehending in your brain. You see, because there's so much BS out there, your brain has to decipher all this different kind of stuff. And then it has to turn around and try to figure out, okay, is this real? Is this not real? What is the, what's taking place here? And then you have to turn around and really think about Okay, well, how do I get around this problem? How do I solve this problem? You know, what do I do to be prepared for this problem? Because if you all haven't noticed, every other day they're throwing something else at us. There's something, there's this or that, and, and this is going on, and, you know, the whole nine yards. So we have to constantly be thinking on our feet, and that's what makes you a good prepper because you have to make sure that you can take the information in, 
process the information, then turn around and have a solution to the information. You see, this is where the government lacks, all right? They can take the information in, they process the information, and it goes blank. Whereas in, if you're a prepper, somebody with a good head on your shoulders, all right, you take the information in, you process it, you come up with a solution. It may take you a little while to think about it. But sometimes if you sit back and you really think about it, you think about it really hard, you're going to come up with a really good solution in your head. And that, that goes for any type of situation. It doesn't have to be like, you know, the end of the world type situation here. If you've got a problem going on in your life, if you've got a problem that you have to deal with at work, if you've got a problem with whatever, you process in the information, you think about it, and you're going to come up with a solution. Some way. You will come up with a solution. Our brains are a very intelligent thing, and it can do this, folks. It can handle doing all this sometimes <clears throat> in a matter of seconds. You hear something, process it, boom, boom. You, you, now you got a solution, or you got to come back. You see what I'm saying? I mean, that's how fast a lot of our brains think. It's quite amazing. Now, there's something else that we all have to really start thinking about, too. <clears throat> and I believe the next part of this is they're going to be going after seed bolts. And I would highly suggest to all people out there, if you are a prepper, if you're new to prepping, start looking into buying either seed bolts Seeds that have been put up, they're in Marlar bags, they've already been sealed and everything else, and you need to be putting away seeds for a rainy day. Because if they're already starting to go after the way we can store the food, how long is it before they start going after how we grow the food that we want to store? You see, they want to get it down to where this is what they want. This is how they want it. And this is how it's going to be. They will be a select few of people, like I did say. And I was generous in my numbers. Yes, I do know and am aware that ever since uh, Charlie Victor 19 came to town, uh, there are a lot more preppers out there than what we did have prior to March of 2020 here in the United States. Now, I can't speak for other countries because I don't know. But there's a lot of people that were caught with their pants down, couldn't feed their families, couldn't find anything on the shelves. And that changed a lot of people. You see, some people do learn from their mistakes. And I get a lot of people all the time to comment and everything else on my channel. And they always leave these comments. And they're just like, well, if people haven't started prepping, then screw them. You know, they're on their own. And I get that. I truly do. I understand where you are coming from. But you see, you have these people that truly do believe that the good old government, the state governments, local governments, Washington, D.C., they're all going to be there. They're all going to make sure that they're taken care of if something majorly happens. And it's not going to happen that way. And a lot of people are starting to wake up to that fact. A lot of people are starting to wake up to the fact that it is in their best interest to make sure that they are prepped and ready. You know, now when you are prepped and ready, depending on where you live in this world, you have different scenarios you have to make sure that you're prepped and ready for, correct? And what you have to do is you have to sit back and you really have to think about what it is that you have to have to survive in the area that you are in? And how do you meet those requirements? And how are you going to afford to do that? And how are you going to be able to survive with you and your family? What is it you have to do? That's why making a plan is so number one. Having a plan 
in any type of a situation, depending on where you live, doesn't matter if you live here, if you live in Australia, if you live in Europe, if you live in Canada, Mexico, it doesn't matter where you live. We all have different things that we have to make sure that we kind of are prepared for. You know, like here in Florida, well, obviously, folks, it's hurricanes. But let's say you go to Wisconsin. It's blizzards, extreme cold. You go out to Dakotas, high winds, massive sub-zero weather. So that means you have your, your vehicle has to be taken care of in a totally different way. Correct? Than what I have to do down here. You see what I'm saying? Every, it doesn't matter where you live. You have to plan and have a action plan put in place on how you survive your own little elements of life. Because like I said, it's different wherever you are. The plan is still basically the same. There is a basic plan that goes no matter wherever you live. You have to have first water. Water is the number one thing that you have to make sure that you can either store, you can gather, you can purify, and you can make it so that it is drinkable so that you can survive. You can survive a lot longer without food than you can without water. Your body will shut down if you do not have water. Second is food. All right. So all different types of food from your dry goods, canned goods, whatever. Food is number two. That's the two pieces of the pie. Then you have to move into all the other things that you're going to need. And this is where it's going to come into play on where you live and how you have to plan. You may want to make sure you have a really good first aid kit. I would highly suggest that you do have a, a decent first aid kit and try to build a better first aid kit for down the road. Because you see, folks, this is what is going to happen. If something majorly goes down, the ambulances and stuff aren't going to be able to roll out to thousands of people if they need help. And what happens if one of those people could be your wife, your husband, your kids, your parents, your grandparents? If you have basic knowledge on first aid and you can you can read about it, you can buy books on it, basic basic knowledge. I'm not saying here. Hey, you know, you need to be, uh, you know, an RN, an EMT, um, you know, whatever. Basic knowledge of first aid will get you a long ways. All right. Now, obviously, you're not going to be doing blunt surgery out there. You're not going to be taking out somebody's kidney or something like that. But if somebody breaks an arm, breaks a leg, got a severe cut. And your first aid kits, you can have ways to. Well, mend them up a little bit and try to um, do the best you can until you can get them to the proper authorities, if that's possible. You know, I mean, there's ways you can stop bleeding. There's ways that you can make slings. There's ways that you can make things to carry people if you're not in your home or something. With using either sticks, you could use a fence post. There's different ways. You have to be able to get creative. Basic knowledge of first aid is going to go a long ways in an SHTF situation or any type of a natural disaster type situation that could be at any point in time. Something else that you want to make sure that you do have. And, and this would pertain to exactly what area of this world you live in and what you are dealing with. And that is your bug out bag. Because in your bug out bag, it's going to be a lot different mine down here in Florida to somebody in Canada, Dakotas, Alaska, or wherever else. It's going to be totally different, folks. Because you have to plan on the area you're in. 
Now, where it gets tricky with your bug out bag is if you have to leave your home, because let's face it, I mean, more than likely 98% of people, if the, the shit hits the fan, you're going to be staying put in your home. Because a lot of people, one, probably aren't able to travel long distances or walk long distances. So for the other 2%, if you have plans and you're going to be going to another area, maybe another state and everything else, because you have family there, you have, maybe you have a cabin, maybe you have, you know, land, whatever it may be. Your bug out bag has to be very diverse in what you have in it. For the simple fact is you may be going from a warmer to a colder climate or from a cold, war, or cold climate to a warmer climate and you have to have things to adjust. You wouldn't want to come down here and be wearing wool socks and um, a wool shirt and a coat. Same way I wouldn't want to be going up there wearing sandals, shorts, and a t-shirt. And it's 30 below zero outside. You're not going to last too long. You see what I'm saying? So you kind of have to have these balances, but it's all based on your area. And for the maybe the 2% of people that are going to be leaving their areas and taking off and going somewhere else, well, then, you know, I mean, those are what's going to take place. But the key here is, is the government is really coming down hard and they're getting these corporations in their back pocket and they want to make sure that they can take and they can destroy us as much as they can and put us down and put a stop to what we do and how we prepare and things we need to do some of these different ideas of prepping. You see, they're catching on folks and now they're realizing that there's a lot more of us than what they originally thought. And they see the writing on the wall. I'm sure they're out there watching videos like mine and, you know, um, Alaskan Prepper and Canadian Prepper and, um, you know, Survival Living and all these different channels on how to prepare, what to do, how to survive, all these different things making sure that you people out there understand and making sure that you people out there that are watching, you know, have a, the knowledge so that you can be prepared for you and your family, because that's the whole name of the game. I don't care what prepping channel you watch, what YouTube channel you watch or anything else. In the end, whether you agree with whatever is being said by the creator on any of the channels, me included, whether you agree or not, this one thing stands out for all of us. And basically, what we're doing is, is we want to try to make sure that you, the watcher, you out there that are watching right now, that you and your family can survive any type of natural disaster, SHTF, EMP, that you can survive and everything will be fine. That is our all our one main goal as creators. We bring you the information so that you can process the information, realize that, hey, you know, maybe I don't agree with everything that this guy talks about or this woman talks about because there's a lot of lady preppers out there too. Let me tell you what. All right. But maybe I don't agree with everything that they say, but I like the way that they have. I like the way that they talk about this or the way they do this. I like some of their ideas. You see, that's the thing. You can take a little bit from this creator and you can take a little bit from that creator and then you can start putting them together. And as long as you come out prepared, that's all that matters. You see, that's all that matters, folks, is that you come out prepared 
and ahead of the game. Because trust me, the government is not going to be there to give you a handout and to make sure that you're going to be fine if the whole system goes down. They couldn't even handle Katrina. You think they're going to handle the whole United States? Think again, folks. Think again. Think again.